Hey, all right, we're online. So, uh, welcome to the Otten International Radio. You're listening to Flagship Digital Insights uh, with myself, Ben Taylor. Uh, and today we have a guest from Pure Clarity. Uh, it's Andre de Gay. Uh, they're all about website person uh, personalization uh, and using AI technology to do so. Uh, Andre, welcome to the show. Morning, Ben. How are you? Very well. All good here. Uh, we're we're yes. fairly close, considering this is going out to the world. We're we're down the road from each other, and it it is miserable. Yeah. We're miles from the sea, and any boats and anything like that. But um, but hey, I suppose that's the that's the world we're living in. That's the way it goes. Absolutely, summer's disappeared for sure, and that's it. Summer's over. <laughs> right. but it's all good. So <laughs> let's um, let's just before we go into details and and how your technology works. Uh, if you could just explain a little bit more about uh, what exactly is website personalization uh, and why is it so good? Why is it so powerful? Yeah, of course. So obviously, um, personalization is all about, you know, personalizing an experience on a website. So, um, you know, it used to be that, you know, websites really were offering the same experience for everyone uh, and e-commerce stores included. You know, it was it was exactly the same experience no matter what customer you were, what type of customer you were, or you know, at what point in the user journey you were visiting the website. And I think online retailers quickly realized that actually what customers want is they want a tailored experience. They want to be able to find the products that they want quickly. Um, and you know, if you allow them to do that, then they're going to buy from you, you know, more frequently. And they're going to keep coming back for more. So, so yeah, retailers quickly realised that, that personalisation was the way to go uh, because obviously customers could find the products that they wanted. Um, but it's not just products; you know, it's content as well. So it's making them feel loved, understanding you know the context of why who that customer is and why they're on your website at that particular time. Um, but one of the problems was that you know it takes a lot of time to do manually. So personalization is great, you know, as a concept, let's give each customer, um, you know, a tailored experience. But actually, when you try and do that manually as a human, it's a real pain. You know, it takes a lot of time. You have to sift through data, um, you know, manually. You have to look for patterns in that data, look at each individual customer, what they've bought before, um, you know, who they are, where they are in the user journey. And it, it just takes a huge amount of time. And that's where the technology comes in. Yeah. Uh, to help with that because uh, things that computers are good at you know processing a lot of information quickly and also looking for patterns and that's where the personalization technology yeah and, and i love one uh, one feature of your technology which um which effectively is switch it off and do it yourself and then and then you can run the uh, a b testing against it and, and really see how how high performing the, the technology really is but i love that you've kind of said well actually if you're a, a customer to us then um, look, prove it to yourself. Try and try and compete, and then the data will show the numbers, and and it will be obvious for both parties. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know that's always been a, a bit of a company philosophy for us. You know that openness and and proving that actually this does work. So that's that was a, a nice feature to build build in because although you know pure clarity takes over those cross sell and upsell zones, the AI just completely takes those over and, and changes those zones dynamically. Um, you know, we obviously the, our clients know their products better than anyone. So what we wanted to do was build in a feature that says, okay, well, you choose the cross sales, you know, to put next to that product. You know your products better than anyone. You know, put that to the test. Let's do a test of you choosing those products versus Pure Clarity actually dynamically populating those zones. And yeah, ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time, the AI will win, mostly because it is dynamic. So when you're choosing a fixed set of six cross sales against the main product, that never changes and it's the same for everyone. Whereas Pure Clarity is obviously dynamically changing what products are seen there based on you know, the customer and who they are and what they're doing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a nice feature to build in. Putting the tech to the test, I'm, I'm all about that. Yeah. You know, never, never fully trust the technology, always put it to the test, always question it and make sure it works. Yeah. How, how you yeah, especially with AI, because I mean, so, some people um, think it's going to, I don't know, they, they have this thing in their head about it destroying the world and it being all about robots uh, taking over. But actually discovering all the different uses of AI, uh, especially in, in things like this, because it is, it, it's so useful and it's so quick and so powerful um, and valuable to a company that actually um, it becomes a no-brainer. 
because because they're competing against it and employing someone to do that um, 24-7, um, you put them against each other and, and from a strategic and business decision, it, it makes complete sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and look, you're absolutely right about the term AI. It's a real buzzword. You know, it does conjure up strong feelings in people, I think. We've, we've got Hollywood to blame for that. You know, uh, AI has always been portrayed as evil, you know, in, in films and that kind of thing. But yeah, it does conjure up strong feelings in people. But really, the technology is there to help, you know. Um, call it machine learning, you know, that, that's maybe a better term than, than AI. But, but yeah, it is machine learning and it's there to kind of look for patterns in that data. But really, um, you know, going back to the point of the tech is all very well and good, but actually what problem is it solving? You know, it's, it's cool to create these machine learning systems and these great things that use AI, but actually how is it benefiting? What is the actual purpose of it and how does it help people in, in you know, day to day? And, and that's the question we always ask ourselves, you know, when we're creating a new feature, how is this actually going to benefit our clients and their customers online? rather than, hey, here's a cool new feature, look at what the machine can do. Um, so, so, yeah, it's always about, you know, what, what, what are the actual benefits. Yeah, as long as, the, uh, as long as the tech is based around the consumer and solving their problems, I suppose it's, it's just, uh, that's the place to be, right? Um, and yeah, it kind of um, moves me quite nicely onto the next question. So, uh, I suppose this is all about website performance. Um, and we love statistics, and we've already touched on it. Uh, I believe you have some particularly good t statistics to show off. <laughs> They're all over your website. Uh, that are that are actually quite quite exceptional. I remember I remember discovering them and thinking, how how is that happening? And and this website personalization stuff. Um, I, I think it becomes obvious. I mean, it's all right saying that a consumer wants a personalized experience, and you might do a few more upsells. Um, but the extent of that and the impact of this technology is actually quite amazing. Um, so do go into the statistics because um, I, I found them quite mind blowing, really. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, again, going back to the point, you know, we, we like to put the tech to the test and we like to prove that the numbers actually support what the technology can do. Um, so, you know, what we do, although, you know, within a, just a few weeks of implementing Pure Clarity, you will see those, those returns and those sales start to come through. And what we like to do is, is kind of take a snapshot two or three months in, you know, so, so that our clients know it's not a fluke. This is actually working as an upward trend here. Um, but across all of our clients, you know, on average, we're seeing, you know, a 26% increase in revenue from using Pure Clarity, a 71% increase in conversion rate, and a 15% increase in average order value. And that's, that's taken as an average across all of our clients. Um, so it, some individual clients are even higher than that. Uh, it all depends on whether, you know, they've perhaps been using personalization before or maybe doing some manual personalization. The clients that see the most jumps in, in revenue and conversion rate and AOV are the ones who haven't been using personalization at all. So they've not even explored it. They're not even segmenting their customers, perhaps. Um, so they see the biggest jumps. But yeah, on average, um, we're seeing those kind of numbers. So it is a, it is a big increase. You know, these aren't sing, single digit numbers. Uh, the double digit, you know, right across the board from conversion revenue and AOV. So it works, you know, it works. And, you know, don't just take our word for it. You know, lots of organizations have done research about personalization. E-consultancy is one. They've done a huge amount of research into, you know, whether personalization makes a difference. The answer is absolutely yes. Um, but it's twofold as well. So as well as increasing kind of revenue through using this, this kind of tech, um, you're also giving customers a, a good experience. And I think e-consultancy, again, uh, did a lot of research around this in terms of um, how customers feel when they visit a website. And they found that I think it was well over 70% of customers feel frustrated if a website isn't tailored to them. So I do it myself. You know, when I shop online, I want to find products that I'm looking for right, right then and there. You know, I want them to know who I am. Uh, without being too creepy and saying, hello, Andre, welcome to our site, yeah, yeah. I know your uh, size, whatever jeans, you know, without being too creepy, I still want to see the products that I'm looking for and I want to yeah. get them as quickly as possible because that's what online shopping is about, you know, as quickly as possible, finding the products you want and checking out. You don't really want to browse. I mean, that varies between sector to sector, but, um, you know, you want to find the product you want and you want to check it out as quickly 
Uh, done it, no fast, yeah. And uh, yeah. So I, I've done a, a previous episode on, on data and things and, and how powerful it can be. But I mean, you just touched on it with um, the extent of this technology. Actually, um, you, you've actually needed to limit it a little bit. And rather than chucking so much personalization there that it's saying, hello, Ben Taylor and Andre, we know <laughs> this is what you like and this is what you're likely to buy. Um, here's what you're going to purchase on this website, but you don't know that yet. Um, you've actually had to go, actually, if it's a, a little bit more discreet personalization, like um, I think you used the example of weather in the area, if it was, if it was relatable to and, and relevant to whatever website it is. Um, and, and just kind of hinting at the personalization rather than being so in your face, oh my goodness, this, <laughs> this website knows me uh, far too well. It's, it's scary. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we don't want to go that far. We could do that, but I, I don't think people are ready for that yet, if, if, if ever. Um, I mean, ultimately, you know, we don't want the customer to know pure clarity is there. You know, we don't want them to know they're being, you know, sort of at you can say things like, you know, if you, if, you, if you address the customer on an individual level on a website, I think that's a bit too far, unless they're logged in. You know, if they're logged into their account, you expect to see a message saying, hello, Andre, you know, or whatever it might be. Yeah. If they're not logged in, we could still do that, you know, because we're tracking them via cookies, but we, we don't want to do that. We want to give them a helpful experience. So we might say, you know, have a banner saying, welcome back, you know, welcome yeah. back to the site, knowing that they're previously visited, but we're certainly not going to address them by name and we're certainly not going to make it too creepy for them. You know, we're trying to give them a helpful experience. So, um, so yeah, we don't really want them to know pure clarity is there. We just want to give them a really great shopping experience. All right, let's talk a little bit about search. Um, so, obviously, quite a lot of these platforms are uh, fairly extensive in terms of product range and traffic going through. And so, navigating the site becomes very important for the um, for the user experience. Um, so, what sort of things? Do you look at in, in terms of search functions um, that have an impact on, on the website performance? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, search is an interesting one. Um, you know, again, depending on, on sector, you know, some don't really use search that much. I think a site with a lot of SKUs, search is really important, you know, particularly on a B2B site. You know, people go on, they know the exact model number, the SKU number of the part they're looking for, and they're okay. going to search for that, and they want, they want that to return back. I think, you know, obviously smart search is, is really big now. You know, there are a lot of, of, of companies out there that are offering a really smart search with an autocomplete um, and that kind of thing. For me, I think the crucial part of search is actually what results are pulled back from that search. I think autocomplete is important. You know, that does add to the user experience and, you know, having little product images in the search drop down is, is important. Um, and you know, with pure clarity, actually, you can kind of embed personalized products within a smart search. If if you know that can be a pure clarity zone, for example. Um, but for me, the important part of search is is the results that come back. Um, are you personalizing the results that come back? So you know, you can have personalized products pulling back depending on what you type in. Um, you can have um, you know certain products pushed to the top of that search. So say if you've got certain products on offer that you actually want to show to, to customers, you can have them pulling back to the top of the search results page. So, so yeah, it's the results that come back and, you know, making sure that that is personalized um, and showing the products that you want to show um, and that that customer wants to see. That's, that's the important bit for me. Although, yeah, as I say, having a smart search with an autocomplete and, and a fancy search is always nice. Anything that adds to the user experience for the customer is, is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, e-commerce is obviously way up, um, certainly the last six months, 12 months. Um, but obviously, there was, al uh, there was already a progression, uh, certainly away from the high street and, and physical premises to the, to the online purchases. We've seen huge growth in Amazon and things like that, uh, but also more local websites and really niche websites. Um, so where do you expect e-commerce to go? Um, relating to um, and th as an industry and as a, as a kind of way of consuming, uh, but also in terms of technology, uh, what do you think an, uh, an e-commerce experience from a consumer point of view will actually become? 
Yeah, it's an interesting question. I mean, I think in terms of e-commerce in general, I think the trend will continue to, to be on the up. I think, you know, obviously with everything that 2020 has brought, you know, it's, it's created even more of an e-commerce boom. I mean, it was booming anyway. But I think the key thing is, you know, retailers that were traditional sort of brick and mortar retailers have realized this isn't going to work. You know, we're going to need to change our strategy. Uh, we're going to have to move online. And, and I think that trend is going to continue. Um, there, there is a huge boom at the moment. And I think, look, the more that happens, the more competitive it will be. So, you know, it's going to get increasingly competitive. And I really think that technology is going to be a crucial part of that. You know, because retail, online retailers are going to be looking at each other. Okay, what, what is my competitor doing that I'm not doing? Oh, look, they're using this tech, they're using that piece of tech. You know, so technology is going to be absolutely crucial in gaining a competitive advantage. And I think that's where, you know, personalization tools, smart searches, you know, shipping, smart shipping. You know, th there is a huge shift towards automation and, and you know, personalization is no different, you know people are going to get busier you know these people actually managing running these e-commerce e stores they're busier than ever they're going to have you know far less time to actually manage you know data sets and you know try and you know do these things manually so it's going to be increasingly important to have automated tools in place that can take away that kind of pain of having to do everything manually so so yeah tech is going to be so important in in gaining a competitive advantage as e-commerce gets even busier yeah, and um, I, I, I'm not sure if this is going to put you on the spot or not, but um, what, what do you think about things like uh, voice websites? So obviously um, things like Alexa have got a lot um, of consumers ready for interacting um, with robots and machines by voice in a very, a very human way, really. Um, do you see that becoming a huge thing and just saying, order me a water bottle, a cup of tea, a coffee, um, or a boat, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of appointment with this, uh, this boat broker? Like, do, do you see that um, becoming a thing? Yeah, it's really interesting actually. About this time last year, I was at the e-commerce expo in London and you know, voice was a, was a kind of hot topic really at the, at the expo last year. I think, um, you know, I mean, I'm a huge proponent of new tech anyway. I love technology. I think, you know, we, there's so many great opportunities and different ways to shop because of the technology that we have. I think with Alexa, uh, and interestingly, actually, we recently did some market research about the term AI and the, the kind of words, the thoughts that customers had when they heard the term. Alexa was kind of top of that list. I think Will Smith and iRobot was in that list as well, but interestingly, but, um, but yeah, I mean, voice, uh, I think will be important. I think initially it will be for kind of, um, you know, uh, fast moving goods, con consumables, things that you, you can reorder really easily. So, you know, Alexa, reorder me a uh, hundred Yorkshire tea bags, or <laughs> whatever it might be, things that you don't need to see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Absolutely. Yeah. laughs> um, but yeah, things that you don't need to see. You know, I think the difficulty will be when you have things that really you do need to see. So, you know, fashion, t-shirt, you know, shoes, um, you know, things that really you need to see. But then, you know, with VR technology now, you know, what's to say you can't put on a VR headset and, and view that product, you know, together with Alexa and actually see that those products in, in 3D. So, so yeah, there are lots of, lots of different ways. I think voice will take off, um, but initially just for those things that you, you, you don't need to see that you can quickly order and, and replace. Um, yeah, the challenge will be, um, when you try and try and order things that really you need to see before buying. Uh, but, but yeah, it's an exciting time to see where that kind of tech is going to go. Right. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on, Dre. Um, no problem. It's, it's been really, really insightful actually. Um, and we've not really gone into quite complicated tech before. Um, so this was amazing for, for me and, uh, and the audience. So thank you very much. No problem. No problem at all. Good to talk to you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Flagship Digital Insights uh, with myself, Ben Taylor. Uh, your guest today was Andre Degay from Pure Clarity. Uh, and we hope to see you again. Uh, thanks for listening and bye for now.